Hey there, guys. Stephanie Holmeyer coming to you live on day 52. Apologize for the last cutout. <laughs> Technical difficulties. So today what we're going to do is some Shopify and Facebook Q&A questions and answers here. Um, why don't we wait to see uh, everyone that comes on. You guys can go ahead and submit your questions for us. Um, over here we've got Roberto Ungaro and we've got Sean Sievers. You guys have seen both of them in the 90 day challenge group answering your questions and also congratulating those of you who have uh, gotten your first sales or even reached a different milestone. Maybe you've gotten to $100, $1,000, some of you are at $10,000. So really today what we want to do is uh, answer any of your questions that you may have to help you reach your next milestone um, in this challenge. Let's see here. Hello, Mark. How are you? Nice to see you. Brad. Mark, what's going on? <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> hey, Mark. <laughs> So on day 52, most of you should already have your Shopify store set up. Um, if you are new, we'll recommend that you start in the file section where there is notes as well as video trainings on really how to get started and set up a successful Shopify store, as well as picking products all the way through um, different suppliers, print on demand, as well as um, creating a Facebook ad. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, yep. Hello, Brad. Hey, thanks. Brad. Uh, we're getting some, uh, <laughs> Brad, you the man. <laughs> yeah, we're getting some positive comments in there. I know this type of forum is uh, quite popular uh, because even though we do have those question and answer, <clears throat> rather the uh, resources <clears throat> in the file section and the videos that are there, uh, you guys really appreciate these opportunities to ask questions on the fly. But uh, don't forget, uh, basically, we're probably going to cover a lot of the content here. A lot of your questions have to do with some of the um, content that's already been published in those videos. So, um, and we get the questions all the time. Hey, where should I start in this 90-day challenge? Which video should I start watching first? Uh, just start from the very beginning. I mean, flat out, just start from the very beginning. And as mentioned before, you can, if you're using Google Chrome, you can use the extension video speed controller. And that video speed controller will allow you to accelerate those um, videos. So you can get through a two-hour video, for instance, and maybe just an hour, just a little over an hour. So you got to be smart about your time. So there you go. All right, do we have any questions? All right. So we got the deal. Sean, you want to take the first question? Hey, guys. Sure, let's see. So deals, we got a deal. He says, um, any recommendations on how to avoid limitations slash bans in PayPal? And how to how to not get payment method disabled? Well, personally, I can personally speak on the uh, payment methods on how not to be how to not get your payment method disabled. Personally, I've had that happen to me before, where I've switched out credit cards multiple times, and I think after the second or third time, it, therefore they'll disable it. So my recommendation in that sense to kind of keep everything, kind of keep everything, kind of keep that inconvenience from happening is. Initially st install, make a PayPal account if you don't already have a PayPal account, and therefore within the PayPal account you can switch the credit card that that gets charged within PayPal instead of switching it within Facebook. Mm -hmm. So to kind of clear that up, so if you're going, to, if you want to avoid that and you want to have your your uh, your uh, payment pay payment method disabled where it's not doing that, make a PayPal account, hook your PayPal account with your Facebook account, and therefore you can change the credit cards as you wish through PayPal. And therefore, you can have anything, regardless if it's your Facebook ad, been charged through there, so you don't have to change it with, with inside Facebook, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Great tip there. Nazar, um, your question is, I'm using a POD store to integration, uh, integration to cons. my store pros, or con pros and cons. Okay, so a print-on-demand store is going to really help you separate you from others. Um, print-on-demand is typically going to be unique designs, um, whether you're re-engineering a design that you saw online or creating your own brand. So it can really, again, it's going to separate you from others. 
The cons is that you don't know whether it's gonna work unless you actually know the exact targeted audience or that you've seen that others have done it and you use their exact design. Um, I don't recommend copying anyone else's design. Create your own unique designs. Make sure that you know your targeted audience before you pay a designer to make those designs for you. Um, and then go out and create that audience in your Facebook ads account and see how big that audience is. And then also, uh, the pros to it is, again, it's gonna help you to stand out. You're gonna be able to, um, you can use it on shirts, on mugs, it's various items, instead of whereas if you're only using AliExpress, you may just have, if you're using like jewelry, you're only gonna get one, you know, jewelry, instead of Whereas print on demand, you're going to have t-shirts, mugs, pillows, mm -hmm. flags, shoes, all of that. So you can use your design on multiple products. Yeah, to kind of add on to what Stephanie's saying, the definitely pros of having print on demand products is you can create designs from Fiverr, Freelancer.com, and you can have your own unique design. <clears throat> and so therefore, a lot of people aren't going to see it, but obviously you don't know if people are going to like it unless you put it out there on the market. But print on demand is a great way to kind of differentiate yourself from people in the market and as far as competition, especially starting out, because you can really have a lot of success, uh, all depending on how all depending on how good your targeting is as far as that goes. So mm -hmm. you can have a unique product, number one. Number two, if you put it in front of the right audience, you can definitely uh, get on a, a fast, fast start when it comes to getting sales in, into your store when it comes to POD. Absolutely. And then uh, scroll up just a little on this one here. Here's that personal okay. account. So, Aladine, uh, personal account or business account for Facebook ads? A business account. That's all i got to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> and Brad, Order. some examples of, of products with high... May. May? Yeah, pro uh, Brad, if you could kind of restructure that, because <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what that means exactly. But I'm sure you're trying to get some to point across, but... Maybe have to finish that with a little bit more precision on how you're saying that. <laughs> Brian Castillo uh, says, hi, have any of you used Oberlo Supply? And what are your thoughts about it? Um, I don't have any personal experience with Oberlo as far as um, it being uh, an app to add products to your store. Mm -hmm. But I suspect that's what you're asking about, whether or not has anybody has any success using it and if it's recommended. Sure. I mean, another popular one in this community is Shopify app. Uh, those two uh, apps will um, con you know, contribute to your efficiency in mm -hmm. adding products to your Shopify store. Among yeah. some other functions, but those are the primary things it does. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I've had I've had a little bit of experience before uh, with uh, Aberlo. I would say the only difference is personally I use Shopify now, but for as far as Aberlo, only difference between the two, uh, obviously Aberlo, there's uh, it's free as far as as far as I go, as far as for the initial planning. But one thing that I would recommend for people to use is Shopify, and the reason why is because on Shopify, you can go ahead and vendor, use, uh, you can use multiple platforms to pull products from. So not only you can use AliExpress, you can also use products from iWish, uh, no, Wish.com, things of that nature. There's a whole list uh, as far as places you can go ahead and get uh, dropship products from, from Shopify. So it gives you a lot more diversity than it would or Berlo, as far as my knowledge. All right. Um, this one that you just answered with Adil yeah. uh, about linking your PayPal account to your Facebook ads account will get your ad account disabled. Um, I, I haven't heard that. I actually use PayPal for my Facebook ads account. Um, I think it really just depends on uh, your ad copy. It could be um, if you've had any disputes before and PayPal may not want to link it to uh, Facebook. I would really check into contacting pay I would recommend contacting PayPal to find out why that is happening as well as submit a ticket to Facebook and find out if there's any rules or, or anything that um, they have done any updates on your account mm -hmm. yeah I would recommend that because personally so far I've had it before I used my PayPal account I switched my credit card like mm -hmm. twice and then immediately Facebook was like they want to make mm -hmm. sure there's no suspicion they're very high they're very 
very strict on that because they want to make sure there's no fraud and things going on like that. But ever since I made that transition to just using my PayPal account and then I can change my credit card to whatever I like through PayPal, I've had any problems. So I would go ahead and give it a try. And then if you do run into problems like Stephanie said, call PayPal. They're very speedy on uh, customer service. And then they can go ahead and help you with any, you know, problems if anything were, were, anything were to happen as far as with PayPal, with face, uh, Facebook, all together. So. Right. And if they ask for any company documents, submit them anything that you have, whether that be um, your LLC paperwork, if they want proof of residency, um, your driver's license, you can actually um, black bank a copy of your ID and black out any personal information like your address or your um, ID number, things like that. Um, you know, you definitely want to comply with them because they'll be the ones that approve your account or disable it. Okay. Um, Jennifer, yeah. in regards to a POD and multiple products, what are your thoughts in regards to running an ad to the collection versus just one product? Um, I have tested this both ways and I can tell you I have gotten a lot more data from running it to just one product because um, then I can tell exactly which product <clears throat> is getting the engagement. Whereas when you send it to just a collection, you don't know which product is really selling more than the other and which one, um, except for looking at the actual sales themselves, um, and as well as the countries or things like that. So I recommend one product. And, and I think if, uh, Jennifer, if your intent is getting exposure on your collection, doing exactly what Stephanie said, but then maybe implementing uh, the upsell app, and that way you can get more eyeballs to the rest of the related products mm -hmm. in that line. That's a very good question. Yeah, very good question. All right, Tim, when targeting, should I make my audience really broad or let Facebook or and let Facebook dial it in for me or try to pinpoint it myself? Uh, so to kind of touch on that. So essentially through the answer question, uh, just give you my personal experience on what I essentially do and what I follow as far as from the people that are very successful on the Facebook world. Um, I personally start broad. And when it comes to a product, whatever it may be, uh, let's just say I were, to, I were to go ahead and target people that like jewelry. So essentially, if I'm unsure about people that have an interest on who's going to want this product, essentially more, I start broad from 18 to 65 or 21 to 65, depending on the product and if they can buy it or not. And then after maybe three to four days, I, let, I go ahead and look at my data, Facebook data. You want to get really good at that. And Facebook will tell you to go tell you who is uh, more likely to buy your product, who's engaged when it comes on the product, when it comes down to the, the device that they're using from iPhone, uh, uh, iPad, to uh, what country they're going ahead and buying from all the way to the age. So that's what I start with. Unless you're for certain as far as who's going to buy it, then I would start broad and then read the data and let Facebook tell you who is going to be versus guessing. So that's what I would do starting out until you're a veteran and you're like, okay, my Facebook knows people from 25 to 34 is going to buy my product more than anything. Then you can start, go ahead and start and uh, go ahead and uh, target people more precisely. But starting out, to answer your question, summarize it, start broad after X amount of days, read the data, and then therefore zoom in on who's likely to buy based on what Facebook tells you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Brad wants some examples of products with high margins. Oh, margin, right, not May. Margins, I, not May. I, I, can, I, can tell, <laughs> I can tell that um, the winner for me is, uh, in my experience, is um, jewelry. A lot of times in Ollie, man, you can find some jewelry <coughs> with a high perceived value. So something that may cost just, if, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dollars, something under ten dollars, I've seen and I've been able to market and get some traction mm -hmm. on um uh, you know, tripling, quadrupling, and even five times their price. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you just have to structure. It also goes to, um, it also, uh, the high perceived value comes into play when you uh, position that product just right in the mm -hmm. ad. A nice looking image, no watermarks, nice and clear, and against a nice color, uh, eye catching background, the copy written just right, uh, using some good elements in, in there to, um, um, lead the customer to read more about that product, uh, maybe using some emojis, calls to action. You know, there goes a lot into a winning ad, but yeah, jewelry, uh, that's where you can capture high profit margins. Yeah, that's, yeah, I can definitely agree on that because I've personally had successes <laughs> with jewelry myself. Uh, that, I've had, for example, a pair of earrings in Alley for a dollar, and I've 
I've marked the price up to 1995, so I got an 18 dollar profit margin. Is so I can speak on that. Also, you've got another another high profit margin would be essentially would be in POD, print on demand. So essentially you have shoes, you have backpacks, you can go ahead and mark up things, uh, uh, wall, wall arts. Wall arts, they, depending on the sizes, yeah. they can be as cheap as, I've seen 20 to 30 bucks uh, without, with or without the canvas as far as to hold it up on the wall and as high as what, $60, $70, but I've seen them go for hundreds of dollars, not only on online, but I've, I've gone to uh, festivals where the people are selling them for $500 to $600. So like I said, it all comes down to the perceived value and, and also the if it's gonna catch the eye. Another thing I wanna throw out there for, if you wanna sell high perceived value products, is make sure your images, regardless if it's just a photo or a video, it's very clean, it's very precise. Like I don't wanna use anything with the water watermark on it. I don't wanna use anything that looks blurry or it's uh, it's it's past the point, or it's below a point of mm -hmm. X amount of pixels on the picture because it might look blurry. So you want to also have a good profit margin, but you want to make sure it looks like it's worth the value that it's, it's showing as far as on your uh, your ad copy or even your ad by itself. So, but those are my experiences as far as what I've sold with the high profit margin: shoes, jewelry, uh, wall arts, things of that nature. Yep, I agree with all of those. Let's see here. All right. Let's see here. Does it say what? We've got. <laughs> Shopify. <laughs> <laughs> so, Santa C is running an engagement campaign for new fan page likes. For how long can I run it to avoid getting in trouble with Facebook? Getting in trouble. For yeah, if you could, sense, sense, if you could elaborate on that as far as in trouble, uh, I'm not, I'm I, not necessarily understanding. I think there is a time limit. I mean, yeah. Facebook will be all too happy to take your money and keep <laughs> running ads. I mean, that's the truth. So as long as you're not promoting anything that goes against Facebook mm -hmm. um, rules, you know, for example, don't be uh, promoting uh, things uh, like weapons, uh, mm -hmm. uh, things with alcohol, uh, alcohol drugs. Alcohol, nudity. I mean, you can kind of do your research on what is acceptable advertising on Facebook, but as far as, you know, how long to run, uh, I think Facebook will just keep running it as long as you keep willing to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as you're not going outside the lines as far as that goes. And if you are, if you have any interest to promote any, any products uh, of, of, of that sort, as far as like being nice or anything, Facebook is definitely not going to allow it. But if you are looking for a platform where you have the ability to promote things that Facebook won't let you promote, mm -hmm. Instagram is a place where you have the ability to go ahead and promote things like knives or maybe a lighter, anything of like survival or knives, weapons. That, that's your best chances, but Facebook is very strict on that. Yeah, and then, you know, I, I have two more points to bring up. So if you're promoting, promoting something like, um, you gotta be careful because Facebook is, is, they fancy themselves to be family friendly. And so if you're promoting something along billiards, make sure that you're promoting to uh, an audience that's 21 or over because uh, mm -hmm. As innocent as promoting anything related to billiards may sound, Facebook will perceive it to be, um, you know, there's this thing about billiards and drinking beer that they think uh, kind of closely correlate in today's society. Um, but I, I hope you get the idea. So be careful with that. And then secondly, maybe she was alluding to um, when you scale up an ad, how if you put, you start off with say a $5 a day ad and then you're like, oh, hey, I'm getting some traction on this. I'm getting a lot of likes and comments and shares and you mm -hmm. want to increase, you want to accelerate that social proof or even on engagement ad, you want to um, just increase the ad budget. Mm -hmm. Only do so by 20% at a time. Don't say, oh, I'm getting traction with this campaign and then um, go from $5 to $20. It's too big of a jump and Facebook may in fact um, not, you know, they'll just, not let you advertise or shut that campaign down. Right. And I'll just go ahead and um, comment on this as well is, you know, it, I would run a Facebook uh, fan page like ad um, as long as I'm getting the likes. Um, if you're, if it's going to be profitable, if you're going to, if you're going to be getting more and more engagements on it and people are actually taking the action to like your page, then I would continue to run it. Um, I have done them where you, I scale it up and I only add an additional um, 5 to 10% on the actual ad as long as it's working. If it's not working, then I would recommend turning it off. 
Because okay, like that's that. what you're paying for is the page likes. 100%. That is my, my mode is saying. He says, thank you. He says, but Mr. Mr. Ali, he says, guys, thank you for your efforts. He says, I want to ask you something. He says, uh, what if I found a product on uh, product on demand in demand, yeah, in demand, but it's too expensive, 200 plus. Do you think that people will buy it from me even if I am new and unknown to Shopify for them and well, they see or they just see my ads? Well, the kind of comment on that, my, my perspective on it is um, obviously starting out, um, I'm sure you guys have seen the trainings where a lot of people recommend you starting out with um, free plus shipping. But my personal, uh, my personal opinion on it is um, as long as you're creating a, a comfortable a comf comfortable buying experience for the customer mm -hmm. therefore and if you target the right audience you can get those people mm -hmm. that will buy those high ticket items so as long as it doesn't look like it's a sketchy a sketchy uh, a page a landing page that they're going to making sure you have uh, you have a description towards it you have it where the shipping isn't crazy or the colors aren't intimidating where people want to shy away you can definitely sell it and the thing is don't take it from me don't take it from us Go ahead and test it. Go ahead and go out there, okay. try some audiences, and therefore see what Facebook tells you all together. Because you can sell products that have free plus shipping. You can sell products that are two hundred dollars plus. It all depends on you know if you're targeting the right audience. So, like I said, make sure you're you're giving the customer a very comfortable experience. Make sure you have your about us. Maybe make sure they can have a way to contact you. Make sure <clears throat> your shipping is correct. Where when you go ahead and check out. And uh, essentially, my personal opinion, if you have some of those fundamentals when it comes down to that buying experience for the customer, they're gonna buy it. So. Absolutely. It is all about the perceived value as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, sp and speaking right to them, if you're going to sell, say, um, a tent, a very expensive tent to someone who loves the outdoors, you're going to want to make sure that you speak their language. You want to talk to them instead of, oh, hey, buy my tent. You know, <laughs> and you want to have great images. That's a really great tip. Oh, 100%. Yep. Mike, um, in regards to PayPal or PayPal card, um, I have actually used both. Um, I have linked my PayPal. Currently, I have two ads accounts where my PayPal email address, mm -hmm. um, I've connected it that way, and I've used my PayPal card. Um, when you use your PayPal email address, um, that it will actually pop up where you have to log in, and then you can select which card your other debit cards that you want to be able to use. So if you, you do Chase or Wells Fargo or Bank of America or you have a Visa credit card or MasterCard, you can attach those into your PayPal account and use uh, log in through the PayPal email address. If you use a PayPal credit card, you've got to make sure that there's money on that card or they will actually, uh, Facebook will not authorize that card to be added onto your account. I did not know that. <laughs> yep. So wondering, okay, and Mark, since I'm in the Netherlands and I'm targeting U.S. only, I think my customer is more likely to get a product. Can I return it? I don't know if that's a okay. question, but yeah. can it be returned? Not their liking after receiving it. Okay, how would they return it? Okay, so if you're in the Netherlands and you're targeting the U.S. only, how can a product be? Uh, if they're <clears throat> going to buy it from you. If they know they can return it, if it's not to their liking, if received. Uh, Mark, if you could resubmit your question, we would be happy to answer that for you. Just un a little unclear on that. Um, yes, PayPal does have great customer service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody else asked a question a little bit earlier, I thought I saw, mm -hmm. uh, regarding returns, how to handle returns. Um, it was just last week that I met uh, a big power player in this industry and he said he it's a great problem to have really what he said is that he moves so much product and his uh, items that he's selling have such a good profit margin that if there's a problem he just assume um, allow the customer to keep that product mm -hmm. uh, you know he he has his uh, virtual assistant reach out and say hey uh, we understand you have a problem um, you know you didn't like the color it's, it, you, something about it that he didn't like then he either allow the customer to keep the product or offer them a refund and allow the customer to keep the product because in the end he, he said that 
in some cases, it just uh, it costs more to go through the process of having the customer send that uh, item back to him and then him cover the shipping and then for a product that he may or may not be uh, willing to resell. So uh, it's a personal decision, really. But uh, I'll, I've also heard it said that, yeah, I'll have the customer send it back to me. I'll give them a refund, and then I'll just inspect the product myself and then uh, resell it. So yeah, uh, different way. ways to go around it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Elle's question is, is it required to get a custom domain name for Shopify as a small budget newbie? Um, it's not required. It just helps your site to look a lot more professional as well as when you are um, posting ads on Facebook. It helps to just show the actual... Um, or when they click on a link, it'll show in the URL that it's an actual website instead of it's a Shopify website. Mm -hmm. So it just helps to keep your business looking more professional. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. And Hugo asked a question. I think he's asking uh, which app to use in AliExpress. It shows you the price of the product plus the price of the shipping. Um, my personal experience is Shopify. I think Overload does the same. I've never used it, so I couldn't answer to Overload. But I know for sure Shopify will show you. Cost of the product and the cost of e-packet. Ooh, good answer. Together. Mm -hmm. Great. Here we go. Okay. It says, what strategies do you guys find? Hold on, said that. Julian? It's Julian Strangers. He says, what strategies do you guys use to find products to test? Any methods that are not commonly used slash known? So, personally, I can give you a couple of things that I personally do as far as to uh, go ahead and research, do my product research. Uh, one thing that I do, uh, something you, everyone should be doing is scrolling through the Facebook feed because the thing is, um, me personally, as much as I don't like the stuff that I see in my Facebook feed for the most part, the thing is it's more likely to help me with me catching trends, stuff like that, see what, see how, see who's targeting you for your Facebook ads, looking at their ad copy, uh, things of that nature, number one. And number two, uh, I go really deep into uh, product research as far as into AliExpress. Uh, one thing, uh, shout out to Damian uh, Coglin. He he recommends people to look for things that are new in Shopify. Shop, I said Shopify, AliExpress. Excuse me. Versus looking at things that's already selling. Yeah, that's proof of if you go to AliExpress and you see things that are been, that have been ordered. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're proven to sell. But as far as the objective for me as well as Damian. We're, we're more so looking towards products that haven't been sold yet and seeing what's unique to the customer, whatever mm -hmm. you may be looking towards. And then lastly, <clears throat> there are a couple sites uh, that you can go ahead and take a look at to see uh, products that are very very highly uh, more likely to be bought more than anything. There's one called uh, shutupandtakemymoney.com. And that website, it shows you products essentially people save that they're really, they're, they really want to buy. It. And they'll, you'll see a whole bunch of people save that product. So you might see a coffee mug and it might say it's been saved 10,000 times or it's been bought 5,000 times. So that's one website I would say go ahead and write down for those who are looking. If you're looking for some product research and you want to figure out uh, what products are unique to the customer, uh, shut up and take my money dot com. Very cool. Great one. Roberto, was there another one that you yeah. use? Another strategy that you use to find products? Well, to find products, um, I will use Facebook. Um, there's that search field up at the top of the Facebook mm -hmm. um, page, and I will just type it in there. For example, if I'm selling a certain piece of jewelry, I will type the name of the jewelry, a little descriptor. Let's <coughs> say it's a heart, um, heart pendant. Mm -hmm. And t not only will I uh, type in heart pendant, but I'll type in uh, free plus shipping mm -hmm. or heart pendant limited edition or just plain old limited and then l let Facebook scrub its database and show you all the ads mm -hmm. that may include uh, that heart pendant that includes in their copy limited or limited edition or mm -hmm. free plus shipping and see how their um, engagement has been and see what their copy looks like because uh, chances are um, I'm going to want a copy you know, replicate some somehow some part of that ad because, uh, especially if they got a lot of engagement, uh, I want to know how they did that. Now, it'll be up to me then to find uh, the audience, but as far as um, the images that they're using, the copy they're using, I think it's invaluable to do that. Absolutely. 
Um, I do that myself. I actually use um, any site that I really go to, even if it's Amazon or um, Interest Print or, or Interest Print, or Int Instagram or even uh, Pinterest. Yeah. Pinterest is great. I type in keywords and I'll just see what else is selling. And a really cool trick that I learned when I first got into uh, e-commerce, it was when you find an actual product, let's say you're on Google or even on Facebook, any image, um, I don't know if Mac does this, but <laughs> PCs does this. <laughs> so if you're a PC user, you can use this technique, Mac, um, I'm unsure of. But you can actually right click on the image mm -hmm. and you'll see uh, down towards the bottom where it says search in Google and you can find out where that actual nice. product um, is being sold at, whether it be on AliExpress mm -hmm. or Amazon or any other supplier site. And you know, one thing to piggyback on that is that I've heard Chris Record and uh, some other guys um, that are highly successful in e-com say, hey, if they find um, uh, a product through their news feed or anywhere really, they'll go ahead and click on it. And so what that they get targeted by that ad again? Um, they'll be able to keep track of that because obviously these the people that are producing these winning ads and, and they're selling a whole bunch you probably want to be on their mailing list and it's okay to be where you're targeted by them so they can reverse engineer what's working for them to institute in your ads in your ad copy mm -hmm. so um, don't be afraid to get on somebody's mailing list absolutely Most that's definitely. a really great point yeah the, really great point. the next question we have a uh, Julio Julio Cruz uh, question is uh, what app do you was it where did we go okay what app do you use to get customers to leave comments and feedback about the products they buy from your store uh, personally uh, one one app that comes to mind is called Luke's uh, L mm -hmm. L O O X and it incentivizes customers to go ahead and leave a comment I mean uh, leave a comment or a picture about the product and then you can go ahead and incentivize and do that by giving them a discount so that's basically uh, essentially how that app is set up as far as that goes where you can get more feedback and more social proof for people to go ahead and feel more comfortable from buying from your site so looks uh, L double O and then X that's a great one um, Ben uh, your question is free plus shipping offer or normal price which is uh, what's better <clears throat> i can tell you from personal experience i have sold uh this one bracelet actually that um i had tested for a while that was selling like crazy so i wanted it and it was a free uh free just pay shipping and so i tested it at the normal price and or actually vice versa paid <laughs> the normal price and people didn't want to buy it at, or wanted to buy it at the normal price with free shipping but when i had it for free to just pay shipping and the shipping was the exact same price as the normal price people didn't want to buy it they thought that oh my goodness you're charging me 9.95 for this bracelet uh, for shipping but you said it's free so <laughs> but then when you when I turned around and sold it for 9.95 with free shipping they actually bought it so and then it just scales from there so I would just say testing is really the way that I figured it out. What about you, Sean? Um, I've had success with, well, personally, I've only, I've only, so far this year, I've only tested products of retail. But essentially, I've, I've, I've seen successes with both mm -hmm. all together. Me, personally, I feel more comfortable with uh, selling retail products. Uh, I want to sell things that have something of perceived value, of a high perceived value, if anything. But essentially, my personal preference on it, I've done retail and I've sold I've sold uh, free plus shipping but I'm more comfortable with retail all together but essentially to kind of get you out of that element of black and white thinking they both work mm -hmm. essentially you just got to find your groove there's no right or wrong because it's like I'm, I'm sure all of us have sold both of retail yep. and free plus shipping it's just a matter of what works for you because the thing is there's the, a whole summary that I want to kind of emphasize on there's fundamentals to follow in this and everything you do when it comes to e-commerce when it comes to you know learning to be a firefighter but some things tend to change and e-commerce is a big industry where things are always changing so figure out the fun what I'm trying to say is figure out what works for you uh, but all, always follow the fundamentals all together try both test them test them you tell us and you post in the group and tell us what's working for you and mm -hmm. you kind of give people in the group more guidance so that's Absolutely. my opinion on that. That's great. Great tip. Yeah, and I've, I've been testing here recently uh, retail only and offering free shipping altogether. Mm -hmm. Just 
the profit margin is, is, is just right. And, uh, you know, at first I was getting hung up on how can I maximize these profits, which I think we all enter this space into maximizing our profits. Okay, I get it because you're in it to make money. Um, but you also want to... Um, you also want to have some sales, even though they're not at the highest profit margins, so that your pixel can gather that data and um, have some purchases in its data. So even if it means not making as much up front, but I think most would agree then, if you can make more sales and have more people coming through your doors at a smaller profit margin, that would sure beat uh, alienating some buyers who would otherwise think that maybe the price is a bit too high, or just few buyers who are willing to pay the price you're asking. So again, like Sean said, testing. Yep. Test it all. Testing. You're welcome, Amparo. She's she's really <laughs> digging the uh, the training. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, we've got a big question here from Simone. What do you do when Facebook blocks your ads account? Facebook blocked my ads account after charging me two hundred and forty five dollars, and you've contacted them and haven't heard back from them. Um, <clears throat> I have personally experienced this. And I can tell you that just continue to reach out to them and provide them with what any information that they're requesting. Um, sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me, sometimes they will tell you that is final decision and they will not allow you to, they will not reopen it. Um, I would go back through our training and learn how to um, create a new ads account. Mm -hmm. I agree on that. And okay. like I said, keep just be persistent because you mm -hmm. gave yourself perspective again. There's billions, this is over uh, 1.8 billion people on Facebook and it's t continuing to grow. And so don't just try once, don't just try twice. Be considerate. There's a billion people, that over a billion plus people on Facebook. So you got to stay persistent. And, and if they're not answering back, you got to be understanding. <coughs> oh, L. Youssef. Mm -hmm. How to know if a market is saturated? Um, just with what. Um, Sean said about 1.8 billion users on Facebook. I mean, uh, and just the amount of people getting on the internet every day, I doubt we'll run into a problem of saturation. I think if that's the issue we have, you know, if it's a saturation thing, then we got bigger issues at hand. Um, I, I would just, I mean, l look at the pet industry cats, dogs. I mean, how is it that every day people are jumping online, opening up Shopify stores, and having great sales marketing to mm -hmm. folks who love cats and dogs? Mm -hmm. I yep. mean, it's, and truthfully, the training that you're getting here, you're learning how to, uh, if you haven't already, go back and start from the very beginning. You're going to learn how to market on Facebook. And just with this free training alone, um, it, it, you're going to be above a whole lot, of, probably the rest of the world in terms of Facebook advertising. So saturation really isn't an issue because most people online don't know how to market. Mm -hmm. And you're getting a lot of information here to put you uh, way above uh, the common person who says, let me just try Facebook advertising. So, what he yeah, said. Don't worry about that. <laughs> what he said. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Here's another one, and this is in regards to Ratesh. Ratesh? Ratesh. Uh, Ratesh. I started PPP ad, PPE ad, and w with a winning product, it went viral in three days. The website conversion. Right, he ran those ads yeah. concurrently. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it looked like it was getting some sales, and all of a sudden, sales dropped and hardly one sale. And that's been over the last two days. Um, I can let you know that um, I became aware that Facebook was doing an update, a major update uh, here over the weekend. So um, that could be it. Um, if you had a, a winning ad set, I would recommend duplicating it and change one thing about it maybe it'd be the age or even um one of your interests <coughs> make it a little bit smaller and try it out again mm -hmm. 100 percent. yeah facebook is always changing that's the thing it's yep. there's no reassurance like there's no product you can set today and then run ads all the way up till december of December 31st, 2017, and then you're going to get sales every single day, let alone consistently. So mm -hmm. it's just something you always got to tweak with because Facebook's always changing. They do it so anonymously, and they don't they, they, don't, they, just, they don't let you know. So you got to just you got to always be adjusting. So yeah. All right. Some info about scaling. Some info about scaling. All right. So when scaling, um. Oh, and 
we're back. Hey. Back. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to scaling, um, I would recommend first you review your data. You see what's working. And what I have done is I go in and I duplicate the ad set. And then I will look at if, let's say it's a particular country and I'm doing worldwide, let's say it's Spain. I'm gonna duplicate my ad set and I'm going to only target Spain. And I'm gonna keep the age, my interests, everything else the same, just target Spain. If it's a couple of countries, I'll probably duplicate it once and then um, take the, those few countries and keep them in there and keep the interest the same. If I notice that more people in a particular um, age group or a mobile device or whether it be Instagram or Facebook, I'm gonna change whatever is going to match that data that's showing me what's working and then cut off whatever's not. Yeah, to kind of summarize what she's saying, read your data, mm -hmm. analyze it after you go ahead and run a PP ad or whatever it may be and trim off the fat so you can use your dollar a lot more efficiently because the thing is figure out who's buying figure out where they're buying from and you can just target that demographic and therefore your dollar is a lot more efficient and then you can go ahead and duplicate that asset uh, from that particular from the original winner because if you so if you're if you if you to kind of summarize this so if you make an ad that's 18 to 65 broad and then after three to four days you find out people that are 18 to 27 are more likely to buy or they bought out of that out of that ad set originally you could just make an ad predicated just towards that towards that uh that range if it's just a woman that's 18 and 27 that live in the united states versus having out every single state in the world all together so mm -hmm. that's initially one way you can scale and then when you duplicate that ad you can go ahead and just target those fundamentals based on what facebook tells you yeah so. absolutely I'll, I'll take two uh, Dan Ryder asks um, if Facebook is acting weird this week. Well, when doesn't it act weird? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's something to be said for what Stephanie said earlier is that there was been a major uh, change that occurred, I think, over the weekend where uh, folks were seeing some sales and then they seem to slow down. So you're not alone, Dan. Just uh, suspect it. Yeah, Mark uh, Verhoeven, apologies if I mispronounced, asked uh, something about how we, how we find our audience for jewelry. And I saw a question earlier regarding... Um, how to find a good audience for jewelry as well so I can answer those two in one and um, I think the best way to do that is so you take your piece of jewelry you're interested in selling and then find you know try to put yourself in the customers mindset you know who is it that would really appreciate this piece of jewelry mm -hmm. and then find an intersecting audience for it um, and what do we mean by that and you might have termed you might have heard intersecting termed as flex targeting for example, you find um, um, a little a little doggy necklace. Okay, so you find a little doggy paw necklace, a little, a little outline of a paw, a little doggy paw. Um, natu your uh, natural inclination would be go after uh, dog lovers, but what specifically which breed? Okay, so that might be um, Chihuahuas, for instance. So then, uh, not only are you targeting Chihuahua lovers, but um, what are some famous, like, like dog uh, type of uh, events? Like, there's this um, the big uh, dog events that happen. Those dog shows. So people who attend dog shows, and uh, maybe organizations that that uh, have to do with dogs, AKC. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of kennel related or dog magazines are there? People who like. I think you would agree that people who subscribe to certain magazines related to dogs are more passionate than your regular dog lover. So you're going to target um, Chihuahua niche and then people who subscribe to certain magazine publications or shows or are there any famous Chihuahuas on TV, you know, um, or um, maybe some, maybe you're going to target uh, animal shelters or, uh, guys, can you think of anything else? Yeah, you can really hit on the dot as far as yeah. looking it up. You can really just target, based on how you target the jewelry, just think about people that are obsessed with this. So you could do, depending on, number one, the product has to be unique. So it can't just be some gold gold necklace. You could probably sell it, but you got to know that's going to be a lot harder to sell a gold necklace than you were to go ahead and sell a gold necklace 
that has emblems of the solar system. There's people out there that are infatuated with space, so you could target people that are infatuated with SpaceX, mm -hmm. Tesla, or NASA, stuff like that. So essentially events, associations, magazines, stuff like that. Kind of those fun those three fundamentals are just examples of what a lot of passions are wrapped around that you can kind of go ahead and narrow down how you can find the right audience for your right product. So make sure the product is unique and really thinks outside the box. Think of what these people are doing that are potentially going to buy your, buy your stuff and what their day to day is like, what they obsess with, regardless if it's influencers, magazines, stuff like that. I've done Wikipedia searches and Google searches for um, audiences that are un unknown to me. I'm you know trying to get creative and trying to stand out with my um, targeting my audience. So if there's a particular product that I think was really eye-catching and unique, but I don't know much about uh, the kind of audience that would appreciate it, then I would just, I mean, Google's your friend. Or just get with somebody. Uh, like, for example, I had to build a store for the, uh, for one of the, um, for a client. And um, they, they wanted to, they wanted a store surrounding mixed martial arts. I don't know that much about mixed martial arts, so I just did some searches and found some groups that were highly passionate about the sport and famous, and I had looked up famous uh, mixed martial arts um, experts, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I found out, I mean, I learned a lot. I educated myself a bunch about MMA, so am I a fan? Uh, sort of. <laughs> looks like I'm wearing a shirt <laughs> about uh, cage fighting, but, you know, I did learn a lot, and it's cool because now I can relate to those people and hold conversations, and next time I see a product come along that might interest uh, MMA, I might just go ahead and promote it myself. Okay, um, there was a question in regards to is, is it success? Have people had success in drop shipping? Um, I personally have. Um, the drop shipping model does work. Um, I've been doing it for five years now. I started on eBay and I've worked on with Amazon as well as Shopify. And I can tell you that across the board, drop shipping does work. Um, it's just really all depending on your products, your ad copy, um, your product description. <clears throat> is your pricing, your images. There's a lot of key factors that play into whether your products will sell or not. Um, I have had phenomenal training and I can tell you that the drop shipping models that I have followed um, through our training here have, have worked a tremendous amount. Yeah. Hundreds <laughs> of success stories. <laughs> thousands. <laughs> yeah, thousands. All right, Valentin, what is your relevant score? What is Relevant score in your ads. I tested 10 uh, jewelry products and just in one, well, it was 10, mostly five, six, seven. Okay. Um, you know, a relevant score, what is in your ads, that's actually gonna let you know if you, who you are targeting is actually going to be purchasing. Um, I can tell you that for me, if my relevant score is a five or a six, I'm turning off my ad. It means my targeting is not very well in, or my ad copy and people are, it's not gonna be appealing to that specific audience. So I would shoot for anything over seven and above. So seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten go. means that you are spot on. What she said. What she said. <laughs> All right. Let's take a few more questions here. We're close to about an hour. Let's see. Okay, I did a PPE ad three days ago. Do you want to take this one? Should I can Okay, okay. So, Osama, he says, uh, I did a PPE ad three days ago, and I... And I get 200 likes and no link clicks or sales. Should I kill it or do a website conversion with the same audience? So, mm -hmm. to kind of clarify, Osama, um, what I would, what personally, what I would would do in the future, I would run a website conversion simultaneously. But in this case, since you just ran a PPE, run a website conversion for at least three to four days, and therefore see if you can go ahead and grab some sales since you've got since you've uh, received some. Um, receive some feedback as far as that social proof, number one. And number two, for the audience, make sure your audience is a, on the rule of thumb scale I use is anywhere from 200,000 to 800,000 people. So if your audience for a PPE is uh, five, one to five million, <clears throat> you wanna go ahead and convert that to, if you're gonna do a website conversion to 
to 200,000 to 800,000. So that's my recommendation right there. So run the website conversion and then make the audience a lot more narrow between that 200K to 800K mark as far as your audience goes. Hmm. That's a great one. All right, Roberto, you want to take this one from Barbara? All right, Barbara Moss asks, uh, regarding like ads, I have done these targeting worldwide as recommended. Okay, that sounds like a PPE. And got heaps of responses. That's to be expected from a PPE and ongoing engagement. However, all come from non-buying countries, okay, with limited English. Again, to be expected on a worldwide. Although I specified it when creating the ad, is this still okay? And should I just be grateful for all the likes? Well, I tell you what, <laughs> be grateful for all the likes because you're building social proof. So when you go on a worldwide, uh, you would expect to get a lot of interaction and a lot of curious uh, people from different uh, parts of the world that maybe aren't in buying mode but just are just ecstatic to be on the internet. <laughs> and so um, I, I think now you really should consider with that social proof um, uh, targeting just uh, maybe just the U.S., for example, and running a website um, conversion ad. Um, mm -hmm. Go with the view content. Yeah. yeah. Make sure your link is in there. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm typing in interest. Yeah, typing interest. All right. Hey, Robert. Thanks for being on today. Hey, Amen, Roberto. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's just take it. two more questions here. Hopefully this is bringing a lot of value to you guys, getting a lot of your questions answered and helping you guys to reach the next level in your business. Let's see if we can get one in here. Let's see. Burning PPP ad. Okay, this is going to be a video. Sean, I know you've done these, so... Okay. Why don't you go ahead and take this one from Lorena? All right, so Lorena says after PPE on viral videos, and then going to conversion ads of uh, conversion ads audience is still clicking on the videos. Uh, uh, so getting lots of clicks, but uh, get a lot of clicks, but not any clicks to offer any remedy since there is only a link on mm -hmm. the ad and not actual image for the product. Uh, if I understand your question right, um, you're curious on why you're getting clinks, uh, link clicks, but not people are taking action as far as buying your product. Um, I'm not necessarily understanding your question, but if I, this is what I'm taking from it. So you're getting people, getting people to click on your link, but they're not necessarily converting. Um, my my recommendation in this case, doing a video ad, if anything, just to really make people aware that they're this is something they can buy as far as in their video ad. Um, on Facebook, you have the option to go ahead and put captions in your videos. So essentially, for me personally, so for the, some of the video ads that I personally ran of the products, it's just a slideshow, something real simple. I haven't done anything and really crazy. I'll put, I'll put in the description, uh, I'll put in the captions like grab, grab this, grab your pair in the description, grab your pair in the link above. Because a lot of people see these ads and therefore they might accidentally click on the video, they might accidentally click mm -hmm. on the link all together and a lot of people are just, they're just scrolling the internet and some of them might not know as far as that they can buy this product. So you need to make sure you're as straightforward as possible and mm -hmm. provide them, you need to lead them into that call to action. Because yeah, you might get people to buy, You might it might seem obvious like, hey, I'm, I'm selling this, but most people are, most people aren't in a buying mode. Me, most people need to be told, hey, I'm selling this. Uh, you need to go ahead and we have this available at this link. Click here, click here right now, grab this claim here. They need to see that because people are scrolling Facebook to scroll. They're not looking to buy. So you need to go ahead and let them know by being very precise on your ad copy as well as if you're doing a video ad. Make sure, go ahead and help that process and go ahead and add your own captions and direct them on where they can go to get the product. So that's my two cents on that. Okay. Got another one, Roberto. You want to take this one right here? All right, then. If you run a, uh, so it's uh, Brian Castillo. If you run a PPE ad and get a sale, Facebook doesn't show you what the age of the buyer is, do they? If they do, where can you see that? 
I don't think you'll get a specific age for that buyer. Um, I'm not I'm not sure about that, but I know you can get um, a date range for that uh, buyer, uh, you know, yeah. age range for that buyer. So uh, when you're looking at your stats out of Ads Manager, uh, there's um, uh, there's a drop down, and I believe it's labeled breakdown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you click that breakdown button, and then uh, Facebook will show you which age groups are buying, okay, or interacting with your ad. So that would be a great start right there. And then uh, if you feel that you want to duplicate that ad, you certainly could and target just that age group or age groups. All right. Just Here's, go to the bottom. Yep, this is the bottom. Oh, that's the bottom? Okay, cool. Yep. All right, guys. So let's see. Got another one that come in. Would you recommend running a conversion ad or an engagement ad when testing for sales on a new product using a video ad? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've done this both ways. Um, it just, I mean, again, it's going to go back to your testing. So I would personally, I've ran both um, at the exact same time. Run a PPV ad and then run a website conversion ad. Make sure that you put your link in there as well. Okay, so we got a few people in there saying thanks. They found value with this mm -hmm. uh, session of Q&A, and we're just yep. all too delighted to share. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you all for sharing all of your successes as well as your questions. Um, we are in there daily making sure that we um, provide you with the, the most value as well as um, our knowledge on whether it be Facebook or Shopify or dropshipping or anything that we can do to help support you. If you are new into this group, we'd recommend that you go to the file section at the top of the Facebook group page and start at day one. Yes, we're on day 52. However, you can always start at day one and follow it through. Um, again, we're here to support you guys. Thank you for being on today, and we'll look forward to seeing you again in the group. Mm -hmm. Have a rocking day. Bye-bye, guys.